The website Bionic Chaos, bionichaos.com, features a variety of resources and tools focused on biomedical data processing, visualization, and education. The site covers topics such as EEG and ECG analysis, simulations, medical imaging, and interactive games. It also includes detailed explorations of ethical concerns related to neurotechnology, as well as a range of tools for simulating biomedical signals and analyzing medical data. The site is designed to support researchers and educators in the field of biomedical data science. For more details, you can visit the page at bonichaus.com slash spectrogram slash bonichaus.com slash spectrogram. Likely focuses on generating and analyzing spectrograms, which are visual representations of the spectrum of frequencies in a signal as it varies with time. Spectrograms are useful for visualizing audio signals, including biomedical signals like EEG or ECG data, where frequency analysis can provide insights into underlying patterns. The page might offer tools or information for generating these visualizations, especially in a biomedical context. The image you shared displays a spectrogram tool from the Bionic Chaos website, hapes slash spectrogram. It shows EEG data analysis in both time and frequency domains. The tool allows users to apply wavelet denoising, adjust the frequency scale, and view the denoised EEG signal alongside the original. The spectrogram below visualizes the signal's frequency content over time, providing insights into the frequency distribution of EEG activity. The HTML code you provided defines the structure of a web page dedicated to IEEG, intracranial EEG spectrum visualization. It includes features like wavelet denoising, various wavelet types, channel selection, and both raw signal and spectrogram plots. The page is interactive, allowing users to adjust settings like frequency scale and window size to analyze EEG data in both time and frequency domains. Additionally, it offers metrics such as signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, and mean square error, MSE, for assessing data quality. If you need further explanation or specific details, feel free to ask. This JavaScript code dynamically fetches and displays EEG data and its spectrogram based on user interactions with various controls on the web page. It listens to events like channel selection, window size adjustment, and wavelet denoising to update the plots in real time. The code distinguishes between a production environment and a local setup, adjusting the API endpoint URLs accordingly. The EEG data is fetched from a Flask API and is then visualized using Plotly for both the raw signal and the spectrogram, offering a detailed view of EEG activity. This Flask application serves an IEEG spectrum visualization tool. It loads EEG data, applies processing like wavelet denoising and bandpass filtering, and calculates signal metrics such as signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, and mean square error, MSE. It features endpoints to retrieve raw EEG data and to generate spectrograms based on user-selected parameters. The data is fetched from a text file, and the process results are sent back to the front end for visualization. Yeah, we would like to optimize how the page uh, looks like, and also the loading speed. We would like to reduce load on the server, so more JavaScript, less backend you can still use backend if uh, absolutely necessary and also specifically for the items inside the container we would like to generate the css to make the page uh, look better uh, specifically thinking the scroller should be wider across the page and the frequency scale uh, can be made uh, narrow, the drop down. To optimize the page's appearance and loading speed while minimizing server load, the following steps can be implemented. Hash front end optimizations. One, move computations to JavaScript, shift more data processing to the client side, reducing server requests. Use JavaScript libraries to handle operations like filtering and FFT directly in the browser. Two, lazy load content. Use JavaScript to load content, e.g. spectrogram data, only when needed, such as when the user scrolls or interacts with the controls. Three, asynchronous requests. Utilize async and await in JavaScript for smoother data fetching without blocking the UI. CSS enhancements. CSS general container styling dot container, max width 1200px. It's like any 
this CSS will be specific to the page because we have one for the whole website as well to actually edit in the HTML. Yes, we have the one for the website. No, keep uh, it's better like GitHub Copilot. So, um, that's not right, is it? So we're linking another CSS. Okay, this is better. Okay, from folder static. Uh, should run it locally. Testing it locally, not deploying it. It's a Flask application, so we have to. This is an error. The port is being used, is it? Ah, because we're running. Yeah, later on we'll be doing this uh, 3D brain thingy. Uh, but for now, I'm actually close it for a sec. Right, so it made log is uh, smaller, but the scroll. Hey, can we just adjust the scroll uh, range uh, scroll bar to actually extend the uh, throughout the whole width width of the screen hey can you just adjust that bit alone we don't need to regenerate the whole uh, script hey for it to actually appear um wider throughout the screen do we need it in a separate section of the html can we just adjust that bit instead of generating the whole thing yeah probably just need to Put this scroller in a separate. Uh, how about the label and the values? Uh, this is what I currently have. How about the label and the values uh, included in a separate uh, section in the scroll bar wrapper? Right, so we have the controls and after the window size, yeah, we have a separate scroll. A wrapper, yep, that sounds legit. But then in CSS, we have the file scroll bar essentially replacing it. All that now it's in a separate uh, section and everything. But why is it not extending? A control shift C, oops. Styles. Uh, why doesn't it have uh, the necessary bit? Uh, let's do the image because it um, control print screen doesn't. What? Which model am I using? Why can't I add an image? So it's something. I know it's out print screen. Yep. It's easy to blame the robot for everything, isn't it? I have to at least know my shortcuts. The scroll ball extending across the full width limits the width to fix it. Scroll ball scratch across the entire screen outside the container. Uh, okay, but that's a bit. Am I doing it outside? Which container? I thought that everything is in my container. Ah, oh. container. No, I didn't have another container. Let's just move it outside here, is it? Scroll bar. Yeah, it's starting. The HTML. This place the styles in the wrong folder. Yeah, this is better. Yeah, so the log now is uh, narrow. Well, narrow, yeah. The window size is okay, and the scroll we have it throughout the page. So this this is better. Uh, this page is not scaling properly. I know it is. Yeah, some things which just uh, don't scale when you um, change the window size, but that's okay. It will still work on refresh. That's still odd that the scroll uh, doesn't fit. Uh, should this just be a hundred percent? Yeah, we don't want this max width. Yeah, we actually don't want any absolute uh, numbers. We uh, we want them all to be relative. 
and it is better uh, than what it was. Let's see, I'm pretty sure scroll can go back into scroll bar, a control F5 it. Let's check F12, a control shift C. Yeah, don't like this with, don't like this with. Anyway, this is only marginal improvement. But those errors are okay, we don't worry about them. Can we close it for a sec? We just worry about the styling for a sec. Yeah, that container, yeah, it's a bit odd how it's arranged. Uh, don't remember arranging it that way, but yeah, don't think we actually need this container. Yeah, if anything, the whole uh, the whole thing should be inside inside it. Uh, let's get rid of it for now. So we have control. We have multiple controls. The problem: too much control, too many controls. Yeah, why the frequency scale is separate? So all that should be in controls. Yeah, the description at the bottom. That's fine. Uh, we separated controls into two. Yeah, understand what the idea meant to be but the execution and we don't have controls in our main css do we and we have this uh, css for the entire project for the entire website um this uh, html i'll be sharing an updated version of it next is the um, html for one of the pages so we would like to uh, rearrange and for for it to be consistent, have um, the same uh, sections and uh, items as the CSS above. Yes, we haven't tried this before. This will be messy. We need to get it right. Okay, so as you can tell, we have two styling CSS files. Uh, one for the entire project and uh, another one specifically for this page.